All right. Uh, hello and welcome. This is Doyle Bueller, um, host of the uh, Digital Leadership Breakthrough Show. And today I've got an amazing guest who I'm going to be introducing uh, very shortly, uh, Josh Schiller. And we're going to be talking about uh, community and connections and, and uh, media and a whole bunch of things that, have re that are really quite um, uh, becoming more highlighted as we sort of become more and more digital. We kind of have to go back to our roots and say, hey, what is the, the real community? How do we create uh, real communities and that sort of thing? And he's part of this fantastic movement um, called High Fiverr. And uh, it's actually brilliant. And, and uh, we're going to get Josh to talk to us about that as well. So. Um, my name is Doyle Bueller. Welcome again to the Digital Leadership Breakthrough Show. Uh, I, help, I help leaders, entrepreneurs, and disruptors scale, grow, and transform their business and sales through digital leadership. And I'm the author of the book on digital strategy, The Digital Delusion. I'm here to show you what real world strategies will actually work for your business. And in today's show, as I said, I'm with Josh Schiller, a creator and big thinker on how businesses need to create and create community and business. Uh, so welcome to the program, Josh. How are you today? Thank you for having me, Doyle. Much appreciated. Yeah, cool. So, so tell us a little bit about yourself. You've well, got a fascinating story. How how, how long do we have? Um, <laughs> as long as you need. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, I, I've been in the the business world for a little over ten years now. Right out of college, uh, I cut my teeth uh, at university. Uh, I was able to get my bachelor's in professional sales, uh, which you know a lot of people don't didn't really know that you can actually get full fed fledged yeah. bachelor's of science in professional sales. So yeah. I was able to do that. I I ask, what's the test like, Josh? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of role a, a lot of role playing. A lot oh, of role okay. playing. A lot yeah. of two minute pitches, a lot of um a, a lot of negotiation classes and a lot of real world scenarios which really enabled myself to really hit the ground running when, once I hit the field. Um, I had the opportunity to work for a, a medical device company. My name is Stryker. Did that for about six years. Worked in the OR, hand in hand with surgeons and medical staff. So if you needed a total hip or a total knee, uh, I wasn't the guy to do it, but I was the guy in the background <laughs> making sure that uh, everything that went in was right. And uh, you know, after that, I, I spent a little time on the digital marketing side. Worked uh, for a digital marketing agency out of Indianapolis for about a year. And now I've circled back and I'm back in medical sales and uh, I do capital equipment sales uh, in the realm of neuro rehabilitation robotics. And when I'm not doing that, uh, I have created a movement called High Fiverr, which really just started out as an actionable way to push positivity in the world and make it actionable. You know, my thing was it, it for me, it was giving a high five each day was a sustainable way to push positivity and make it actionable. You know, for you, it may be doing these shows where you inform others about digital transformation and digital strategy, which actually can help people, right? Yeah. You know, for some others, it may mean baking cupcakes, right? We all have our way, <laughs> or holding the door, giving compliments. We all have a way to make positivity actionable. And yeah. the, more, the more and more I've went on this journey, the more I hear from people about the world needs more of this. So with, with that being said, that's really why um, High Fiber has come to fruition. Is that a necessity? Yeah. Well, I want to make more cupcakes out of this too. <laughs> <laughs> how do I do that? Can you show me how to do that? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. So you're not a baker then? I I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a baker. And uh, and you know, around this time, it seems like cakes get extra good and cupcakes and all that stuff. So I try. I try my best to stay away from as many as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I think I've been eating too many cupcakes lately. So, um, but it's a, it's a cool little mo movement because, well, well, tell us how, how you're doing. Like I've just been enthralled by it. Tell, tell us how you're connecting sort of the media digital side to, you know, positivity. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, just to bring everything kind of full circle and how it all works together, whether we're talking about sales, life, you know, positivity, any of that things like digital, right. Let's talk about that. It, it, it's about being able to convey or tell a story. Right. And when it comes to building a brand such as High Fiber, the story is positivity, right? And pushing positivity, but making it actionable, not like the unicorn and rainbows positivity, right? But actual positivity that you can actually take into your day. And, you know, it's some, something that's very interesting to me is like, you know, especially in a business setting, take it like LinkedIn. I put, produce a lot of content for Instagram, Facebook, and um, Twitter occasionally, but mainly Instagram and, and, and Facebook. And what you'll see is that the content that you find on these platforms is a lot different than the content you'll find on, on LinkedIn, right? And, and it's understanding the 
the story which needs to be conveyed on each of those platforms. Or yeah. you might wind up like one of those, you know, posts on LinkedIn where you, somebody says, well, this doesn't belong on LinkedIn. This, this belongs on Facebook. Yeah. And it's knowing that tone and being able to convey that story. And even if, when it comes to positivity, what's the best way to do that? Yeah. It's, it's, it's not to necessarily, I, I want to produce this piece of content for positivity. That There's things that happen in each of our days that we can highlight, but we're more prone, unfortunately, to highlight the negative that happens, right? If we're at work, we want to call up our colleague and say, did you hear what just came down from corporate? Um, and you want to brood about that. And I want that same level of enthusiasm, which I think a lot of people are yearning for as well, uh, to have that same enthusiasm and the same actionability for positivity as they do for when something bad happens as well. Yeah. 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 So, so how, how are you sort of overcoming that without sort of getting into that realm of, you know, rainbows and, and unicorns kind of thing. I think it's equal parts positivity and equal parts authenticity, right? It's 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 getting everyone on the same level that, listen, there's no such thing as a perfect day. Every day is not just amazing. But the fact that we're sitting here, the fact that we're even alive, right? What's the chance of that even happening? And now we're communicating via uh, remote interviews and I'm, I'm talking into a webcam and I mean, it's crazy, right? It's crazy. And if we can't come back to that foundation of, listen, it's all good. The fact that we're here, the fact that we're even existing at this point, then we can work on the other things. So, so that for me is how I balance the two, right? It's not all positive, yeah. but it is all good, right? If we're, if we're here, it's, it's, it's pretty good, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. We can agree on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've got a lot. We we do have some stuff sorted out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, in in that line, like, um, obviously, sorry, my audio was just shut down. Um, in that degree, like, we want to be able to build communities, and how how do you sort of see that spanning the 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 digital divide between? You know your program, uh, your show, your guests, and then obviously you're you're trying to build a media. You're trying to build you know a business as well. Like how how do you connect those? Because there is a massive gap there. I think anytime you you talk about building community, right? Whether you're talking on a local level or you're talking online, a community is built around shared ideas, right? Around shared values, and I think that the most important thing that could be done is, is really voicing and, and establishing what those values are, right? And, and, and that way you can actually create this central thing, right? Where people can actually get around it, right? When I first started High Fiverr, it was really just me wanting to push positivity into the world. Like there was no other agenda besides me wanting to make people laugh, right? The equivalent of me calling you saying something to get, you know, you're not in a great mood and saying something to get you in a better mood, right? So it started on this like foundation of, of good, you could say, right? Where I just want to have a positive impact. And then as I keep doing this, right, as I keep doing it, keep going, now we're almost to a year now, a little over eight, almost nine months. Mm -hmm. And people, people want to get around it, right? They, even when they don't know what it is, right? It's like, I don't know what this is, but I, I like it and it makes me feel good. And I just want to be around it. And that's where I think when you have the ability to establish what those core values are and then be able to create, whether it's content or or events or, or things around that, that's really the magnet to really have a group of people start coming together and start really becoming more aware of, wow, there's more people out there that think the way I do. What could happen if we actually just got together and put our minds together? And not only that, but then took steps together and made it actionable. And that's the disconnect really where, you know, you asked how it, it's that last piece. It's not just, hey, let's all feel good. Not just, you know, I want to feel good, but actually doing good after you feel good. Right. And, and, and making it actionable. Because how many times have we went to a seminar or something like that and you get out of there and you're like, Oh my God, I got it. I, I figured it out. Right. I have this thing. And then two days go by and you're like, eh, well, yeah, it's a lot of work. Right. Or, When's the next seminar? <laughs> and, and so that's where I think, you know, and you've heard it in many different forms from a lot of different people or whether we're talking about Simon Simonick or any of these other people, like establishing that why, right. Mm -hmm. Know why you're doing something. It, it, it went like this. So, you know, everybody always asks, you know, I want to, I want to, 
you know, live, live with purpose, right? I want, I want purpose. I want to find my purpose. And the way I like thinking about that is in order to find your purpose, right? Whatever it is, you have to live purposefully. And in order to live purposefully, how do you do that? Yeah. You have to know why you're doing things. So it all comes back to that in the end anyway. So to build the best, biggest, whatever your goal you have in terms of building community, before you worry about building the community, you have to establish what those core values are, what those, that, that, that thing, whether it's that that idea that people can rally around and then start building together. And ultimately, like we've said before, you know, taking it from my friend John Andrews, who said it, taking it from URL to IRL, which is in, in real life. Yeah, no, exactly. So you're really not pushing people. You're you're kind of giving them a, a point of, of relation. And they, if they understand your why, then they're going to enjoy it and and that sort of thing is that kind of what you're saying well if, if if they know your why and they agree with it right and it's a shared goal right where, where it's like for high fiver who doesn't want to feel good right who doesn't want to do something nice for another person right a lot of yeah. times you know especially being from the northeast you hear a lot of times oh you know the, these uh people are cold right you, you yeah. know it's like yeah well but if you you're not willing to take that first step, right? If you're always waiting for the other person to say hi to you, I don't know if that's the best way to go about it, right? Like yeah. because you're 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 always waiting on someone else to to make the initiative to to be good or find good or or or, or, or you know give a high five. It, it's like you you'd be so surprised where even on some C level meetings that I've had, you know, executive level meetings, I've given high fives and like it, it, you see the whole room change, right? Because there's yeah. some people like. Did he just do that? And then there's other like, and then meanwhile, the CEO is like laughing with me. Right. And we're on yeah. like a different level now. And yeah, it's because, yeah. and, and that's where I'm very interested in these coming, you know, months, years, days to really talk about how positivity and, and business essentially they, sometimes they don't mix very well. Right. Yeah, because yeah. you have, you have people who, who, who look at positivity as something that is so far off from real life. Right. Mm. That it kind of just. Yeah. 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 But that's not, you know, we, we have business to do. And <laughs> yeah, well, that 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 makes perfect sense. So so what kind of um, what kind of strategies can can businesses use then to take this, you know, this fantastic why that you've developed and, and to develop it into a community or a business or whatever the case may be? I, I think that's the best part about High Fiverr is the fact that High Fiverr is really just it's. It's whatever your high fiber is, right? And it sounds like, well, what are you talking about? My high fiber, your high fiber. It's like we all have a high fiber, whether it's a, a, a personal mm -hmm. brand, right? Yeah, whether yeah. whether it's our what's business. my high fiber then? <laughs> your, your, your high fiber is informing the world about digital strategy, digital transformation. Your high fiber is talking about, right? I mean, that's what it is, right? You're 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 teaching people how to basically adapt, which is one of the most important skills throughout history right darwin right where this is this is huge right to be able to and you're that for you that. <laughs> right that for you is huge because you're actually helping people and that, that's the other thing right if whatever you're doing if you tie whatever you're doing to actually how you're you're physically helping others mm -hmm. that's the important part Right. The widget you sell, whether we're talking about technology, whether we're talking about medical capital equipment, it doesn't matter. You know, the, the biggest disconnect I hear from sales professionals from a, you know, is like we love talking about features, right? Features, 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 features. But how is this really going to benefit the other person on the other end? So when we're talking about businesses and, and how they can create their high fiver, yeah, they yeah. need to take a, a, a long look inside themselves and ask themselves, what is our value proposition? Yeah. Yeah. You know, if, if we're selling a commodity, what, how else can we differentiate? Right. I think that's the hardest part too. Right. It's like, I, I was reading this article on digital transformation and it was probably one of the best examples I've heard. It's like, like digital transformation is a lot like going to the casino and being by the roulette table and you know, you have to place a bet to win, but you just don't know where you're, where to put your chips. <laughs> right. And it was a great example because I think there's a lot of people out there who who know that in order to succeed, whether it's the next year, next five years, that they're going to have to make some bets. Yeah. The problem is, you know, maybe they went down a road. Maybe, maybe they went and dealt with this digital marketing company who built this website for them. 
and they had a really bad experience. So now anybody who, who, who does website development is, is, is bad in their book, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's really overcoming that. And I think, but that's where having that vision, right? Having that vision, not only of, you know, who are we, what do we stand for? What is our value proposition? But where do we see our business going? And where do, where, where do, does, where does our business fit in to the customers that, that we want to be right? Our ideal client, right? Whatever I, our ideal client is, how can we make the experience for them when they deal with our, our brand, our, our product or our service, how can we make that the most memorable? So they keep coming back for more and more and more. And it starts with value creation, right? I mean, that's. You got to you you create value for people. And, and, if it, and if you know why you create value for people, and if you know your why, and you're able to convey that, you can build that community around whatever it is that you want. Yeah. Because people will know why you're doing it. No, for sure. So, so what, what comes next then? Like once you've defined your, your why, um, you know, you're getting people interested, like what, what do you have to carry through to kind of continue this, to build that momentum to, or sustain it or grow it? Like what, what, what can we do? So are we talking for it, like within our company, within the company? Within or your, the yeah. Well, okay. no outside, like growing the business, scaling the business, you know, or scaling the community for, for that word too. Like, like how do we build that momentum? Um, a good example, I, I don't know why, but it's probably from our conversations, Josh, but, um, you know, one of the, the a cool movie was, you know, speed where he had to maintain the bus at 55 miles an hour. And if it went under, like it kind of blew up and people died and that sort of thing, sad stuff. But, you know, we kind of have to, once you have that momentum, you know, you have to keep it. Otherwise, you know, bad things might happen as well. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I think when, when, when you have that momentum, right. And, and, and you're working consistency, consistency is huge. Right. And in order to be consistent, you have to be realistic about what you can actually do. So let's take a, step, a couple steps back. You know, when we're, when we're talking about taking these steps in this direction as a company, it is so important that before we talk about anything that's customer facing, that in the company, we're all on the same page because mm -hmm. I, I'm sure a lot of people out there are struggling with maybe two or three different trains of thoughts uh, of, about which direction the company should go. Right. So first and foremost, I think executive level buy in on any of these initiatives is mm -hmm. absolutely paramount. Right. If you have one person within an organization that's trying to drive change and you don't have that buy in on an executive level executive level, it's going to be very hard to make those long term strides or, or those act actions that you'll need to take to make it a reality. Right. So I think once you have that executive level buy in, now it's about, OK, well, who who within the company, right, can actually drive this. Right. Maybe it's one person, maybe it's a couple people. Right. But actually tasking people within the company, right, that are more tech savvy or whatever, whatever if they have skill sets that are in line with the initiatives that you want, putting them in charge, right? And then it's about coming up with a plan, mm -hmm. right? Not just because one thing you see sometimes when companies come on board with social or any of this other stuff is they'll post like crazy for a week. They'll literally put out everything that they have in that first week. It's like, <sighs> like have to get out, must produce content, right? And it's like, and you're sitting there and you're like, oh man, like the, they're just, they're just starting. The, the problem with that is it's not sustainable. Right. So, I, again, it comes back to whether we're talking about personal development, we're talking about ourselves, it's self-awareness. Right. But you have to have that same self level of self-awareness as a company as well to say, OK, well, this is where we want to go. These are the actions it's going to take to get there. Who do I need to put in charge to make this happen? And then what are the KPIs we could put in place in the meantime to make sure that we're hitting those goals? Right. And you don't want to just shoot for that like last goal. Right. But you want to put steps in there. So you could get those quick wins, right? So I think number one, getting that executive level buy-in. Number two, building a team within the company that can make sure that this rolls out, set the right KPIs in place, and then just be consistent, right? You have to be consistent with this. And this is not something, you know, we talked about cupcakes before, right? It's like there, are, there, is, no, there is no diet you can do today that will eliminate the amount of cupcakes you've eaten in the past week, right? There, <laughs> like, it's, what, it, what is it going to take? It's going to take making smart decisions at each meal. And, and whether we're talking about digital or social or any of that, it's, it's the same principle, right? It's going to take you making smart decision, decisions on a minute by minute, by hourly, by daily basis. And in the long term, 
if you've done what you need to do, if we're talking about weight loss, you're, you're going to have that weight loss. If we're talking about digital transformation or social media or, or building brand or building community, if you're doing that in a consistent manner with, with a plan in place, and obviously you have to adjust, right? Because nothing's going to happen perfectly. You might not get, you know, you may not lose 40 pounds, but you may lose 30, right? You may lose 35. And if we're talking about from a business aspect, that's where I think having that plan, working that plan, and then being able to constantly go back tweak and have people that are held accountable for it. That's, that's yeah. a good recipe for, for driving those initiatives forward. Fantastic. And, and, and keeping and growing that momentum as well. Yeah. Fantastic. So, so where, where are you headed then Josh with high fiber and, and everything else? So, yeah, so uh, my nine to five during the week is, I, like I said, I work for a neuro rehabilitation robotics company. So yeah. we help people. Um, we have robotic devices that help people with neuromuscular conditions, stroke, uh, traumatic brain injury, spinal cord injury, basically walk again. Right. So that uh, is, is a big initiative for myself. Um, you know, my mother, she had a spinal cord stroke. So mm-hmm. there's something near and dear to my heart in terms of why or why I want to do what on that front because I actually get to help people like my mother who have suffered uh, traumatic life events. And then, you know, the, the six to 12 or seven to two as it is sometimes at night, you know, for now the high fiver uh, really is, is, has, crossed another chasm as as they say right we've we've went from this idea to now it's a movement to now really one day hopefully being a media company where we can be an aggregate for the good and also help individuals and brands uh share their story right and and be able to not give people a voice or companies a voice because they all have them already but help them amplify it and especially if it's a good one especially if it's something that's positively impacting the world and i really see sky is the limit you know when when people talk about, well, what is the value proposition of high fiber? You know, I said it came out of necessity. It's because the leading cause of disability in the world today is depression affecting nearly 300 million people. And that to me is, is a problem, right? And I'm sure it's a problem to a lot of other people too, and more than 300 million of them. And if there's, if by producing content is if by holding events, if by getting people together can, can help that, I want more of that. I want so much more of that, that there's no limit. And it, and it scares me to think of how big it could be because when you start saying, well, how big can this be? It's well, how many problems do we really want to solve? And when it comes to depression and when it comes to people feeling like crap and, you know, wanting them to feel better and wanting them to have that same level of enthusiasm of life that I get to experience on a daily basis. And I know other people do as well. Yeah. That's a mission that I'm willing to do until the day I die to make it happen. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. That, that's um, an amazing story, Josh. <laughs> very, very inspiring and very insightful as well. So um, thanks for sharing. Um, did, did you, uh, how, how do you, I sort of want to close with one final question, but how do you deal with sort of that negativity and, and stuff like that? Like high five is fantastic. High five is, fun, is fantastic. But you know what? Our day to day can be, you know, a little bit depressing. Like take yesterday for example here in manhattan like how do you what kind of message do you want to get out as because not because of that but just to kind of say hey look let's keep moving type thing i think you know it comes back to to gratitude right it comes back to perspective it comes back to understanding um we're all fighting our own battle in life right we all have things that we deal with on a daily basis and you know, somebody asked me today, well, how are we going to stop this? And, you know, just as you've probably seen Star Wars before, you know, there's a light side and there's a dark side. And to say that, you know, we can eradicate all the bad and, and you know, the darkness doesn't exist would not be real. So I think if we're talking about high fiber, if we're talking about real life, it's that things are going to come up that are not ideal, right? Things are going to come up that may throw off your day. But if you can come back to that perspective of being grateful for even existing, mm-hmm. for even living, right? Being grateful to have the opportunity to connect with anyone in the world. When just when I was yeah. in kindergarten, I had like a pen pal, yeah. like a pen pal. That means I wrote on, and for, for even people who are younger than me, a pen pal is when you wrote on a piece of paper, right? You, yeah. And you, you <laughs> sent it to somebody across the world. And then by the end of the year, you got it back, yeah, right? Yeah. So, so the fact that we can even do what we do today we have to all be grateful for that and also understand that just as in life, nothing is perfect. There's not going to be a day where nothing bad happens. Mm. But if you look at the long term and if you look at just all the possibility that you can have by actually just 
taking action. That's something to be so grateful for. And that's something that if, if you can go into your day with that attitude, the best lesson I ever learned is, you know, that I always wanted to impact people, right? I always wanted to, to change the world and help as many as possible. But you know, when I really started helping the most people, it wasn't when I tried helping people. It was when I became the best version of myself. Mm. So a lot of people point fingers, whether we're talking Democrat, Republican here, you need to do this. You need to do that. My challenge to everyone is take those fingers that you're pointing outward point them back into you and ask yourself the tough questions. Yeah. What would you need to do to be the best version of yourself? And if you do that every day, it's like a ripple effect, right? Then somebody else goes, well, what, why, why is he being like, why is she, you know, then, well, and then have you ever been around somebody who's really nice or really good? And you say a comment, maybe that's, you know, off color, whatever it is. And you're like, oh man, I feel bad. You know, yeah, and yeah. it's the same thing. If yeah, you, yeah. if you're that light, if you are that positive, nobody wants to be the negative person in the room. Right. If you're all there and you're all talking about all oh, this at work or, you know, I, I hate this. I, I complain about this. Or, people are going to do that. But if you start seeing it's like it's like last thing, it's like being you're eating, you're eating at lunch at table. Right. Yeah. And somebody brings Burger King and the other person brings a salad. <laughs> the person who brings Burger King, like kind of like feels a little bad about it. Right. It's like, yeah. oh, oh, I should, I should, I should have had a salad. And it's the same thing with positivity. Right. Yeah. There can be no darkness in the presence of light. And that's the only time darkness really gets eliminated. Right. Yeah. So be more of that. We need more lights. We need more people that are going to stand up and say, hey, there is good in this world. It's yeah. right here. I'm going to be the best version of myself. Who's coming with me? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, thank you. And instead of pointing your fingers at somebody or pointing them at you, you could go like this and go high five. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love online, it. online high five, Josh. Thanks yes, for sir. being a fantastic yes, guest <laughs> and uh, sharing your brilliant insights. And uh, yeah, just just sharing as well. It's it's been fantastic. I really appreciate. Uh, what you've been able to um, offer and the, and the value that uh, you're creating as well is just phenomenal. Um, so thank you so much for that. Um, so, and yeah, so I guess we'll sign off for now, but thanks for watching. Um, there are three core categories that I go through as part of these digital leadership Facebook live events uh, to give you and show you the strategies that work for business. Uh, the state of digital, where I talk about specific ideas and insights happening now, how they affect your business, what you can do about it. On Wednesdays, I have digital leadership guests where I interview an expert in the field and discuss their strategies for success. And t today we had the um, a great pleasure of speaking with um, uh, Josh Schiller. And then on Fridays, I have a discovery uh, question and answer on digital strategy and marketing. So thanks again for watching. Uh, please like, leave a question or comment, give a high five, fiver as well, uh, or a happy face. And uh, join me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Doyle Bueller. Thank you, Josh. And uh, we will see you online. Thank you. Hello. High five. High five, sir. <laughs> <laughs>